Welcome to the Copilot for Microsoft 365 Tech Accelerator event. My name is Angela Robertson, and today we're going to talk about getting your small and medium sized business ready to use Copilot for Microsoft 365. We're going to start by answering this question As an SMB, is Copilot Pro or Copilot for Microsoft 365 better for my business? From there, I'm going to share details about how to securely prepare your environment, followed by how to stay secure. And then I'll be providing some next steps. Spoiler, you don't have to do it alone. And we have some tools that will help you. So which does one buy as an SMB? Copilot for Microsoft 365 is a great choice for small and medium sized businesses due to its integration with Microsoft 365 apps. If your business already uses Microsoft 365 for productivity and collaboration, having Copilot directly accessible within those apps streamlines your workflow. You can generate text, get contextual information, and enhance your productivity without switching between different tools. Copilot for Microsoft 365 provides additional contextual information. It understands the context of your work within the Microsoft 365 document, making it more relevant and useful. Whether you're drafting emails, creating reports, or working on presentations, Copilot can assist you with relevant suggestions. While both Copilot Pro and Copilot for Microsoft 365 offer text generation capabilities, having Microsoft integrated into Microsoft 365 apps allows you to seamlessly create content within your existing documents. Whether it's writing code snippets, composing emails, or drafting reports, Copilot can assist you directly where you need it. Copilot for Microsoft 365 enhances collaboration and communication. You can use it while collaborating on shared documents brainstorming ideas, or communicating with colleagues. The ability to generate relevant content within the context of your work fosters efficient collaboration. Now let's get ready for Copilot for Microsoft 365. While the concept of a user is easy to understand, understanding the concept of a tenant can be trickier. What is a tenant? A tenant refers to an instant of Microsoft Entra ID. Within this instance, information about a single organization resides. This includes various organizational objects, such as users, groups, and devices, as well as application registrations for both Microsoft 365 apps and third-party applications. A tenant contains access and compliance policies for resources registered within the directory. If you're familiar with Microsoft products previously, that concept of a directory will sound familiar because Microsoft Entra ID used to be called Azure Active Directory. The primary functions served by a tenant include identity authentication and resource access management. From a Microsoft Entra perspective, a tenant defines an identity and access management scope. For example, a tenant administrator can make an application available to specific users within the tenant and enforce access policies for that application. A tenant holds organizational branding data too. And that branding data impacts end user experiences, such as email domains and the URLs that are shared with your employees from SharePoint. In the context of Microsoft 365, a tenant establishes the default collaboration and licensing boundary. Users within the tenant can easily find and collaborate with each other, but they cannot directly interact with users from other tenants. Your tenants will be securely isolated. When it comes to protecting your users within the tenant, Multi-factor authentication, often called MFA, plays a crucial role in safeguarding your users and your business. The first step is requiring multi-factor authentication. MFA requires users to authenticate using two or more factors, such as a password and a one-time code sent to their phone. By combining multiple authentication methods, MFA significantly reduces the risk of identity compromise compared to relying solely on passwords. In the era of increasing cyber threats, MFA acts as a robust defense against unauthorized access. Admin accounts with elevated privileges are prime targets for attackers, so we wanna protect those accounts too. Enforcing MFA for admin roles ensures that even if credentials are compromised, an additional layer of verification prevents unauthorized access to critical systems and data. When you set up per user MFA, you're requiring individual users to perform multi-factor authentication during sign-in. For businesses licensed for Entra ID P1, conditional access offers additional features like user group targeting, risk-based conditions, and integration with authentication strengths. Protecting users with MFA is vital for maintaining a strong security posture, safeguarding sensitive data, and mitigating risk for your business. 
At Microsoft, we commit to four fundamental principles on data privacy. You as the small business owner control your data. You also know where your data is located and how it is used. We secure your data at rest and in transit. We also defend your data. Data residency is a critical consideration for small and medium-sized businesses. Let's explore why this matters. In terms of legal compliance and privacy protection, data residency refers to the physical or geographical location where an organization's data is stored. As an SMB, you must adhere to these regulations to protect user privacy and avoid hefty fines. For risk mitigation, ensuring data residency helps mitigate risks associated with data breaches, unauthorized access, and noncompliance. By storing data within the appropriate jurisdiction, as an SMB, you reduce the likelihood of legal penalties and reputational damage. Data residency impacts business continuity and disaster recovery strategies too. Having data stored locally ensures faster access and recovery during emergencies. As an SMB, you'll need to balance efficiency with compliance when choosing data storage locations. So when it comes to protecting your data, after data residency, we're going to think about classifying sensitive data. What is the sensitive data in your organization? We have to first understand what does sensitive data mean? Sensitive data encompasses information that if exposed or mishandled can have a detrimental consequence to your business. You'll need to protect this data against unauthorized access and that ensures that you're safeguarding the privacy, security, and legal compliance for your business and your users. Here's some types of sensitive data. Personal identifiable information, often referred to as PII. That's data that directly or indirectly identifies an individual, such as a social security number, an address, or a phone number. Financial data is also sensitive data, and that's related to financial transactions, credit card numbers, bank account information, and the like. Healthcare records, such as medical history and diagnoses. Intellectual property includes proprietary algorithms. Legal documents, such as contracts and legal correspondence, that's another type of sensitive data. And finally, sensitive data can include communications, such as chats, emails, and documents containing information that would be detrimental to your business if shared. Implementing classification and labeling is the next step. After you identify what your sensitive data is, you want to implement some classification and labeling. The labels that you implement will classify data based on the level of sensitivity. Labels help identify and protect sensitive data while ensuring user productivity and collaboration. And these labels can be applied consistently across documents, emails, and other content. Once you start to work with Microsoft's data sensitivity tools, you're preparing for data loss prevention. And when you leverage Microsoft data loss prevention tools, you can monitor and report risk threat of loss. With deep content analysis, we can help you prevent data leaks and ensure compliance. Finally, you can train your employees on recognizing and handling sensitive data. Encouraging the responsible handling practices of data minimizes the risk for you as a business leader. A well-defined approach to sensitive data identification and protection is essential for tenant readiness and the overall security of your organization. Let's spend a little bit more time on defining what is sensitive data. When defining data sensitivity labels as an initial framework for your Microsoft 365 co-pilot in a small and medium-sized business, we have some guidance for you. Data classification is the process of organizing the data into different categories based on the sensitivity. When you're using the Microsoft classification tools, you're using our tools to help handle, protect, and act to determine that appropriate access to the data in your organization. You start by creating a data classification framework with three to five classification levels. Each level should have a name, such as public, internal, or confidential, a description that clearly explains the sensitivity label, and a real-world example to illustrate the type of data within that level. Here are some recommended classification levels. Public, non-sensitive data that's available to the public. Internal, for employees use within the organization. Confidential, sensitive data requiring controlled access. Or highly confidential, the most sensitive data in your organization that's often legally protected. As you work on setting up this layer of protection for your organization, keep it manageable. Limit the number of levels to avoid complexity when it comes to classifying data. You can start small and expand later. There's no limit on the expansion that you can do. You'll want to prioritize the features that are critical to your organization based on the business that you're running. A well-defined data sensitivity framework ensures effective protection and compliance for your users, your tenant, 
and your data. When it comes to thinking about data sensitivity, we started at the micro level. We can zoom out as well because you have data that you store at a container level. When you think about SharePoint and Teams, those are really containers of data, and we can classify data both at the micro level and at the macro level. For example, you may say that a team site is private, or you can say it's public. And as you make that classification, you can determine whether external users will be allowed to access the information in that container. You can also determine if you want to limit access to managed or unmanaged devices. And then you can also decide on the authentication context where you want to have the data accessed. So as much control as you want over your data, Microsoft has tools that will allow you to exert that control. Let's say you're a small and medium business that employs device management and you want to limit access. You can strike a balance between security and productivity. That means that you can say, we're gonna allow full access in this certain configuration or in other environments, you wanna limit access and that helps you control risk. As the small and medium sized business owner, you control access over the type of access to your data. And that really gives you a lot of protection depending on where you are in your business life cycle. The bottom line is that Microsoft offers a portfolio of tools that any SMB can use to protect their users in the data with Microsoft Copilot for 365. Let's explore data life cycle and retention policies for Microsoft 365 Copilot in the context of small and medium sized businesses. What is included for retention and deletion? Retention policies for Teams chats and Copilot interactions include user prompts for Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, including the text type by users. Copilot responses to users, including text, links, and references are included in your retention policy. Messages indicating that a response is in progress are not captured because they lack business value. Any of the messages can be retained and deleted for compliance reasons. Microsoft helps you get started here by giving you a framework for thinking about data retention. That way, depending on your business, you're retaining the information that you're legally required to retain and then deleting that information when it's no longer required. So how does all this work with Microsoft 365 Copilot? Copilot messages are removed only when users delete the associated Copilot chat in the Microsoft 365 chat feature. For other Microsoft 365 Copilot user scenarios, messages remain but are hidden when users close the chat or close the app. Now on the screen, you'll see a diagram. There are two paths in the diagram here to show you how data retention works with Microsoft 365 Copilot. For data flow one, if messages are removed from Copilot, the message is moved to the substrate holds folder where it remains for at least a day. When the retention period expires, the message is permanently deleted the next time the timer job runs. For flow two, if messages remain in Copilot after the retention period expires, the message is copied to the substrate holds folder. This action typically takes between one to seven days from the expiry date. When the message is in the substrate holds folder, it's stored there for at least a day, and then the message is permanently deleted the next time the job runs, typically between one and seven days. So now that we've talked about how you can set up your users, your tenant, and your data to be protected with Microsoft 365 Copilot, let's explore, once you get everything set up, how are you going to get your users onboarded with Microsoft 365 Copilot? For user onboarding to help your people quickly realize the benefit of Copilot for Microsoft 365, we've developed a user onboarding toolkit. This toolkit includes ready-to-send emails and community posts that you can customize and share with your business users as they onboard. The content is designed to be tailored to suit your organization's needs, ensuring a smooth transition for new users. When it comes to offboarding, there are sign-out sessions from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, where the user portal allow you to initiate a sign-out of all Microsoft 365 sessions for a departing user. You can also block sign-in from user accounts going forward. Again, we have data retention procedures to ensure the proper data is retained for the period required. You can automate both onboarding and offboarding processes using lifecycle workflows with Microsoft Entra. These workflows streamline tasks based on the user's lifecycle, making the process efficient and consistent. 
These onboarding and offboarding practices contribute to a secure and productive environment for your small and medium business using Microsoft 365 Copilot. As we close out today's session, I want to make sure you have access to the Copilot for Microsoft 365 User Onboarding Toolkit. The link to the toolkit is on the screen and it's available for you to download. Again, you can use it as is or customize it. Thank you for taking time to learn more about Microsoft 365 Copilot for business. We look forward to helping you secure and protect your users and your data as you continue on your Copilot journey.